Hello, Alyssa here for AOP Tech on YouTube. Today we're gonna to take a look at the Google Admin Console, and specifically we're going to look at the users portion of that. Users is where you add, rename, and reset passwords for all the users in your organization, as well as create sub-organizations within it. So I'm gonna jump over to my Admin Console. I'm already logged in. Users should be one of the main ones you see. If you don't see all of the uh, admin console portions that I have here. You'll notice along the bottom, it'll say more controls and you'll get a couple other icons for your dashboard. And all you have to do is drag those icons up from this more uh, controls up into your main dashboard view and it'll add it there. So if you don't see users, go ahead and drag it up so that way it's easy to get to. It's something that you'll use really consistently if you are an admin on your Google Apps domain. So I'm gonna select my users. And you can see I have a bunch of demo students here that I use for my Google Classroom. So to create new users, whether they be students or teachers, is really straightforward. Down here in the bottom right-hand corner, you'll see uh, the Add User button and Add Multiple Users. When I hover over that plus sign, I get both of those options. So first I'm gonna select add user and I'm gonna name my user there. And you're gonna give it, you're gonna name, put the name of that user as well as what you're using as your naming scheme for the accounts. I tend to prefer to set the password for that user and I set a, a pretty straightforward password for that organization or that group of students. So that way it's easy for them to log in on the first try. What it'll do when they sign into that Google account for the first time, it will prompt them to reset that password. So you can either set a password so it's kind of easy to get all students in particular uh, in on the first try, or you can auto-generate that password. and then select create. If you select additional info, it'll look for things like addresses and things like that. You're free to include that information. But for most purposes, creating a new user is just that uh, beginning information. And again, it'll either send an email to them or you can print out a page that has their username and their default temporary password for that. Um, or you can just sign up to class. If you're using the add multiple users, you'll see that you get to download a, an Excel file or you can bring that into Google Sheets um, and you must fill out the first four columns. And this is what it looks like when, when it opens. You have to fill out first name, last name, email address and password, just like we filled out to create the new user on a single user, but instead you're doing it in a batch user form. And that's really helpful for schools when you already have those kind of spreadsheets that have class lists automatically populated. So that way it's really uh, fast and efficient to get students or any users in general into your organization. When you've created and saved that, you can come back and attach that file to batch upload. So you'll see on these students here, um, you can see when they've logged in and whatnot and how much email space they're using. And you'll notice some of these icons on the far right. You can reset a password from right from this main part of the user screen. You can rename, sometimes that takes a, a little bit of time to take effect. Uh, Google gives a warning, it might take 24 hours. And then if I use the three vertical dots, which some folks call the snowman, if I select that, I can delete a user. If they leave your school or your organization, you can suspend them. So if there's ever a case where you need to temporarily disable email or the account in general for an individual student, or member of your school community, you're able to do that. You can also send a message this way. If I select that demo student there, if I select a user, I can do many of those same criteria. I can see what apps are created for them. I can see what groups, if any, they are in. And we'll have a separate video for uh, about creating groups. Um, I can also, again, from here, reset the password move to another organization, which we're just gonna talk about in a moment, and I can add them to a group, as well as those other options such as rename, suspend, and delete. So right here on, my, on the left side of my screen, I've opened up the filter so that way I could see that's what this 
uh, symbol is up at the top. It's a filter. So that way I can see the different organizations within uh, my domain. So right now, most all of my accounts are within the main organization. If I select the, there are three dots on the side here, I can add a new sub organization or edit the organization that's there. And I'm gonna select this add a new organization. And I can create, I might say grade three. So that way I can give specific permissions to third graders. You might split it up between faculty and staff. And users can be moved in between different organizations. So if you had a group that was maybe coaches and that coach became a full faculty teacher for you, you're able to move that teacher, that coach into the teacher category instead. And you're gonna create that organization. I've actually already created a sub organization perfectly for my demo students. So that way in the apps menu, I can give them different permissions. And there's a whole video about our apps menu. So that way you know how to turn different apps on and off for students. So once you've created that organization, you can see I can add in an individual user into that. But you're most likely, especially when you use the batch user update, they're gonna go into this main organization. So there's two different ways I can add students into that sub organization of demo student there. So if I'm gonna open up one demo student and I can use the control at the top to move to another organization, select demo students, and it'll tell me that some services may be turned on and off for those students. I confirm it and that student is moved to that sub organization. But more often you're going to have more students, uh, more than one student that you have to move to that sub organization uh, at a time or more than one user you're going to have to move to a sub organization at a time. So what I'm gonna do, you'll notice if I kind of hover over this icon, I get a little checkbox. And by selecting that checkbox, I can select multiple users at one time. And this is very helpful in uh, moving people, moving users in between different organizations. When I select multiple users, up at the top right hand corner, I can add them to a group, but I can also move them to another organization. So I'm gonna select move to another organization, I select demo students, and then all the ones I have checked off have been moved to that organization. So I hope that helps you manage and organize your users in a great way. Know that there are accompanying videos for this about apps and groups. And as always, feel free to subscribe to AOP Tech on YouTube here for our latest ed tech videos. We are also on Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, and Instagram. Follow our resource website, aoptech.weebly.com for registration information for any of our AOP Tech events and for more ed tech news. And as always, feel free to contact me or one of the other team members for help with anything ed tech or Google Apps for Ed. Have a great day.